to bring us back here to Washington to put bills on the floor to fix these problems they created. But unfortunately, that's not what we're doing yet again another week of no bills on the floor to lower gas prices, to lower costs that are crushing hardworking families, uh, to do anything to secure the border. Uh, you talk about being tone deaf and out of touch. Kamala Harris over the weekend said that the border is secure. Maybe she says that because she hasn't been to the border to see how out of control it is because they've opened up the border. And as Nicole talked about, this is creating pro problems for families all across the country. We had over 100,000 deaths of young people last year from fentanyl and other drug overdoses because the border's open. Most of those drugs are being made in China and brought across our open southern border. Sorry, Kamala, the border is not secure. And in fact, it's so open that over 100,000 Americans died last year. Young people that aren't going to school today, that aren't going home to their families for dinner because they won't secure the southern border. And so when you look at all of these problems, uh, as I've gone around the country, not only throughout my district in South Louisiana, but so many other districts, over the last month you hear the same pleas from families saying, we wish Washington was actually addressing these problems. Well, the good news is we have a plan, and help will be on the way. We're going to be rolling out our commitment to America in just a few days to show the country how a Republican majority would actually solve these problems that President Biden and Nancy Pelosi and the far leftists have created. You know, just look at California. And it is David Valadeo talked about the problems they're dealing with. You had California just a few weeks ago pass a law banning oil and gas produced cars. You can't drive a car driven that's, cre that's fueled by fossil fuels in California in a few years because they want everybody to have to go to electric cars. And in the same week, they actually came out, Gavin Newsom said, you can't plug your electric car into the house plug to charge it up because their grid is so unstable that they can't even charge electric cars. So they're going to make you use electric cars. They're going to ban gasoline-powered cars. At the same time, they're telling you you can't plug your car into your household electric socket because they don't have energy. Where do they think energy comes from? You're not plugging your car into a tree. You need some stable energy sources, and a lot of that would be fossil fuels, but they're against fossil fuels here in America. They're okay with getting it from Russia and other tyrannical dictators. And so we have a plan to solve these problems. We're going to continue pushing for them here. I wish we had bills on the floor to address those here. We've laid out to Speaker Pelosi what those bills are that would lower gas prices, that would provide a stable energy supply, that would lower inflation, that would secure our border. But they won't bring any of those bills to the House floor because they want to continue doubling down on their inflation-ridden policies, raising taxes, raising spending to the tune of hundreds of billions of dollars, hiring 87,000 IRS agents to go after lower-income people. And yes, the CBO confirmed it after they passed the bill. Over $20 billion in new taxes that are going to be paid for by people making less than $400,000 a year, which breaks Joe Biden's pledge. He knew it before he signed the bill, and he signed the bill anyway, and they held a party at the White House yesterday celebrating the fact that they're raising taxes on lower-income families to give special interest giveaways to their rich friends, all while the market's collapsing. That's how out of touch they are. Republicans have a plan to solve these problems. And we're going to continue pushing for them. Yes? So you were just explaining the, the solutions you guys have. If you could just explain to the American people specifically what would be the top priority and kind of just a little bit of what, you, how, what impact you expect that to have. And also, secondly, Democrats were just up here pushing the label um, MAGA extreme Republicans. How do you plan to separate yourselves from that label and counter that narrative? Yeah, the country's tired of all the divisiveness. I think both sides, Republicans and Democrats, universally panned Joe Biden's negative speech that he held out in front of Independence Hall with the red lighting and the anger and the fury that he had. Uh, people are tired of that kind of divisiveness. And what they're asking for is solutions. And Joe Biden does, doesn't have answers. That's why he's yelling and calling people names. He's calling half of America fascist. People are fed up with that. What they're asking Joe Biden is, how are you going to solve these problems you created? And he doesn't have an answer. The good news is we do have an answer. And so to get to your first part of your question, what we're rolling out in the commitment are a number of items that we would bring to the House floor if we were in the majority to solve these problems, to get back to a focus on the issues that hardworking families care about. 
you know, when you get outside of the bubble of D.C. and you talk to people in communities, they're struggling and they're paying too much for everything and they just want Washington to address these problems. So we're going to bring bills to lower inflation, to lower energy costs. It's not just the gasoline costs you're paying at the pump, which are more than double digits over what they were two years ago. It's when you go to the grocery store. It's when you pay your electric bill, if you're, whether it's the summer and you're trying to cool your home or this winter. If it gets cold and you're trying to heat your home, in many parts of the Northeast, they don't even have enough energy to heat their homes because they block pipelines. They block the ability to get energy so you can't even get heating oil. And so we're going to bring bills to fix those problems. We're going to bring bills to secure America's southern border. We're going to show the country how to do this. We need a Republican majority to do it. It would be nice if you had a Senate that would bring those bills up as well. But we're at least going to show the country what we would do. And look. I think it's going to create a lot of enthusiasm. People are hungry for bold conservative ideas to fix these problems. And then if we do get a majority, we will have a mandate to go do those things, and we will, uh, we will at least show the country a better way. Uh, thanks so much. Heritage Action is lobbying against the latest White House request for more Ukraine aid. I understand there are probably the votes in the current Congress who passed that, but if you do take the majority, uh, how are you going to handle like growing uh, calls in your caucus to kind of scale back the amount of support we're giving to Ukraine? I think what you're seeing is there are a lot of members that want to see more accountability in the Department of Defense and a more of a focus on the threats that are out there. And look, Joe Biden was asleep at the wheel early off before Russia invaded Ukraine when they were asking for some basic tools to defend themselves. And for whatever reason, Joe Biden said no. And now we're in a much more of a crisis mode. Let's stop governing by crisis and look at the real threats that are down the road. China is moving very aggressively to build up a naval fleet. And right now, our naval fleet is in decline. And Joe Biden has not put a plan together to address the threats that are out there, not just today, but down the road. And that's what we're going to be putting a focus on. So going forward, can we expect the same level of support that we provide in Ukraine? We haven't, if you seen, take we haven't seen the bill. And again, this gets to you know their basic failure to govern as a majority under Speaker Pelosi. We're literally days away from a government shutdown, and the party in majority in the House, Senate, and White House hasn't even filed a bill to, uh, to prevent a government shutdown. They keep talking about a bill that's going to be filed that's going to have billions in new spending for this and billions for that. Uh, they're not working with us on a bill that can actually show how to responsibly fund the government at the adequate levels and address real problems families are facing. They won't bring those bills to the floor. They won't even file the bill. Maybe she's waiting until September 30th, the midnight hour, like Nancy Pelosi Thank normally you. does. Thank we'll do one more. Um, Senator Graham introduced a 15-week abortion ban bill. I know House Republicans have a similar version. Is that something a House Republican majority would put on the floor for a vote? Well, first, we need to see what our majority looks like. But I think if you've seen, we are a party that defends life. We stand up for life. You know, the Born Alive Act is a bill we've been trying to bring to the floor. Every single member of the Republican conference is a co-sponsor of the bill that says if a baby's born alive outside the womb, that baby should not be able to be murdered and call it abortion. And yet states like New York currently do that today. And so the Democrats won't even bring a bill like that up. I will tell you this, you know, and, and they want to try to contort this issue every day. They don't want to talk about the fact that their party has gotten so extreme that they went from a party that used to uh, say that they wanted abortions to be rare. Today they want to mandate abortion all the way up until the birth of the child and have taxpayer funding pay for it. That's not where America is. And so, you know, we defend life not just inside the womb, which we're proud to do, but we also defend life in communities where you're seeing crime overtake so many cities. And as Nicole talked about, Democrats want to let the criminals back out. They don't want to just defund the police, which they've done in many big cities. They've defunded the police, and that's having devastating consequences on crime. But they're also now going to no cash bail, letting criminals out without even paying a dime after they've been charged with violent crimes, and they go commit more violent crimes. So people aren't even safe in their communities. They don't respect life there. They don't respect life in our communities where you're seeing over 100,000 kids being killed by fentanyl overdoses that are coming across their open southern border. So if they actually respected life inside the womb, outside the womb, in communities all across America, they'd be working with us to fix these problems, but they won't because they just don't care. And I think they're going to pay for it on November 8th at the polls. Do you Thank support you. a 15-week ban? Have you guys gotten an update on when you might get a briefing on the front line of the rain? 